Hello everybody. Welcome to Talking with Phoenix. Uh, for those who have seen the walking and talking segments, I've touched on these subjects before, but I thought I'd like to touch on it again, where I'm not just walking around and being distracted, but where I can actually sit and think and, and gesture, which is a whole lot of fun, because you guys know how much I love my gestures. So, today we're gonna be talking about, I'm gonna use the same title as I did for my walking talking segments, Captains and Damsels and also about why men are so needy and willing to settle whereas women tend to take their time and like to peruse their options and aren't as really as quick to commit and if they are quick to commit they generally don't last the test of time at least they're not so much inclined to last the test of time as much as the as the guys will so let's let's look at the world we live in because really everyone is if we're all victims under the same umbrella we're all victims of circumstance and conditioning ultimately and if you want to look at how men and women interact and the kind of relationships they form or desire and pursue it's good to look at the society in which they are developed in which their tastes and their palates are developed and their ideas of love and lust and romance and all of that jazz so, you know, if, if you look at the bare essential, and one of the videos I touched on how that one of the biggest differences between the genders are that they both have different windows of opportunity or prime windows of opportunity. And what I mean is, you know, it doesn't matter what age you are, you're always going to be able to meet someone and, and find a companion and someone that will love you and cherish you for who you are. But each, each gender, male and female, each have their prime window, meaning, you know, this is when they have the most opportunities abundantly um, because they're in their prime, you know what I'm saying? The prime window. So for, you know, for females, the prime window generally lasts from, the, from when they're ready to start dating, let's just say legal age 18, um, up until the age of 35, even 30, you know, because when you start heading towards menopause and you can't have children anymore, you know, time starts ticking and women be racing and then they'll start, you know, they, they got to find somebody to secure if they want to fulfill the dream and the vision of having a family. So when you're in your 20s, you know, you're in your prime. As soon as you hit 30, I think most women will be more open to settling down when they find something good. But with that said, if, if within that time frame something better comes along, they might be more inclined to move along because they've only got a window of 18 to 35, so that's only 17 years, whereas a man, on the other hand, his prime window of opportunity starts from when he's, let's say, 18 years old until he's not 35, not even 45, not even 55. You know, men can still be fertile up until the age of 60, even 70. And that's the thing, in this society where it has been conditioned that women kind of view themselves as objects which they must adorn, they must be youthful and supple and entice their man with the right looks and the right moves. It's all very superficial and it's all about beauty from an outside perspective. So, you know, women also for that reason, their time frame is still up to about 35 and then a lot of men will keep hunting for younger fish. They're not going to go for old trout, so to speak, no offense. Personally, I think all women are beautiful. I'm more attracted to older, older women past 30s, but that's just me. So, you know, I'm not saying this is the way it is extremely set, but generally speaking, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, in terms of beauty and being youthful, women only have so much time, not a whole lot of time. Men, on the other hand, it's different the way that we are conditioned and the way women are conditioned to be attracted to men and what they look for in a man. A man doesn't need to be pretty or beautiful. I mean, it helps to be handsome, but that's the thing. A man can be 30, 40, even 50 years old and still be dead sexy, like James Masters from Buffy. You know, that guy was 40 years old when he was playing Spike and Buffy. You know what I'm saying? George Clooney, Johnny Depp. All these guys are still like, a lot, of, a lot of girls would tap that regardless if, you know, if it works both ways. Um, and yeah, it doesn't matter about age because it's not so much about the youthful appearance and being beautiful for a man, it's just as much as it is about his status. And that's the thing, if you've got from the age of 18 to let's say, let's be realistic, 18 to 50 or 18 to 40, which is a significant amount of more time than a woman has in a prime window of opportunity, mind you, it's at least double, double, and then some, 
the window of opportunity the woman has. You know, the, the man, his status develops over all that time from the age of 18 to 40, 50. He's got more time to develop his reputation, his image, uh, his sense of affluence, you know, prestige, and it's all about you know, how much he accomplishes in that time, how much he acquires in that time, because now moving on to another talk, you know, this, this is how society has conditioned to evaluate each other. If you think about it from childhood, what are, we, what are girls taught? You know, from the, from the first day out, they're given Barbie dolls, right? And all, all these different outfits that they can dress the Barbie dolls in and, and little makeup kits and little houses and making everything look pretty and decorating. Uh, they've got little magazines for girls, you know, the ones where you like you cut out the clothing and then you can mix and match on the body and, f and sort out all different like outfits for your little like princess or whatever. From, from the day women are born upwards, in the Western society at least, it's all about uh, beauty and cosmetics and fashion and really it's all about you know being raised from the outside in instead of the inside out it's it's not like the way boys are raised on the other hand where it's all about being brave and courageous and taking risks and being daring and being fair and you know all these things that are about the inside qualities you know being patient being persevering being courageous you know what I'm saying being smart being aware uh, there's, a, there's a lot more emphasis, uh, in my perspective, my observations, on how boys are raised in terms of them developing their inner strengths and qualities and attributes and the things which make them human, the things which give them a connection to self on a deep level. They're raised from the inside out, whereas women are raised from the outside in. And this leads us to the dilemma, and this goes hand in hand with why women really do see that window of opportunity, you know, when they've got that youth and when they're fertile. You know, once a woman's no longer fertile, not only does her self-esteem drop because she thinks, well, what guy wouldn't want a family? Even though there's plenty of guys that already have kids and are single fathers looking for a partner, or don't even need children, you know? It doesn't really matter if you can't have children. It doesn't matter how old you are, you're still worthy of love and it's out there waiting for you. I believe that. But, you know, there is this conditioned sense that, you know, if you're not fertile and if you're not beautiful and youthful, then you're not really in your prime anymore. So that's how society has it. You know, the women really view themselves and their worth based on this, their outside appearance, you know, which is why there's so many self-esteem issues and which is why a lot of women not be settling and why a lot of women be fickle, inconsistent, in their attitudes, their beliefs, and the way they behave. Because instead of being developed from the inside out, where it's about their own belief systems, or it's about their own feelings, how much time do we have left? Yeah, their own feelings and, you know, their own qualities and values. You know, they weren't taught about all that. Instead of that, it's more about, okay, am I behaving according to everyone's expectations? Am I playing my role properly? Do I look pretty enough? Am I wearing the right perfume? Is my makeup put on too thick? You know, are, are my clothes properly colour coordinated? Am I am I pulling off the right moves in the bedroom? You know what I mean? Is my boyfriend getting bored? Do I need to figure out some more stuff to add to my routine? You know, you get a lot of girls getting together. What are they talking about a lot of the time? Fashion. Where to get good makeup and, you know, different ideas. And it's all about the outside, superficial stuff. And it's, be, it's because it's been imprinted upon them since the Barbie dolls and the mix and match cutout dresses and... And all of this, whereas boys, you know, it's about their qualities and it's about developing their skills. You know, boys play with random toys and they've got that thing where they've got like the, the toe, uh, what do you call it? Like the fork, what do you call the thing that digs up sand? It's a big machine. Anyway, boys play with all these toys because it's about developing skills and abilities. There's a lot more emphasis on that. And that's what this culture is. I think it's deliberate that the sexes have been divided apart and stereotyped and dichotomized completely. And women, you know, they raise at odds with each other. Whereas women evaluate themselves based on outside observations and outside approval. You know, a woman is taught to, to find a man with status, right? So that when she couples with him, she denotes a, a sense of worth and status onto herself. Just like in the book, Second Sex, although it was written in the 60s, it has a lot of points that the woman is kind of like the second sex. And as it says in the book, that she has no function or no value or worth until she couples with a man. And then he imparts her worth. And that's still kind of there, I think, that women aren't taught about this developing skills and qualities because they're meant to 
develop all, all that same sense of worth that a guy does by developing those things by hooking up with a guy. But to do that, she's got to be beautiful and she's got to play the right moves. So that's what she's taught about. She's just taught how to entice men, how to attract men. It's all about the outside, you know? And that's why they lose that connection with their inside. And a lot of them, is just they're just lost in their image and their ego and worrying about what everyone's thinking. And at the same time, having this idea impressed upon them, I want a family, I want kids. And because they're not acting from a place within, they can go from a guy to each guy to each guy. Because a lot of women who really do follow this conditioning, not that everyone does, but the women that are really conditioned this way might not even ever know what it means to truly love and truly connect. Maybe they never found themselves enough in order to share themselves. They just look for men who they, they are taught throughout life you know, that, that are ideal for them, that have the characteristics and the various attributes and the money maybe, whatever they were taught to idealize and, and be attracted to. Maybe they just find those guys and then just couple with them and they're not really in it with their heart. They're just in it with their head and thinking, okay, I've, I found the right guy. Now I've got everyone's approval and I, I look good enough and I, I feel good enough now. You know what I mean? But it's not really because they're with someone they love on an intimate level where it doesn't matter what people think, but it's the exact opposite. It's because now everyone's thinking the right thing. The thing they want everyone to be thinking because they're with the right person. You know what I'm saying? Until better comes along. The next better person, the next right person, and then they'll move on to that. And a lot of women I know firsthand can love you to the end of the day one minute and then at the end of the day hate your ass and be twisting their heel into your heart, laughing, a genuine laugh and smile at your pain as they move on to with another guy. And it's like, how do you go from one extreme to the other? Because to me, I think maybe those girls were lost in in a disconnected state outside of themselves. So they really never connected with anyone truly with their heart. They couldn't feel the empathy, the sympathy. You know, if, if you're disconnected from your center, you, it's, you can't empathize with other people. You don't really care yet. You're not really connected in that way. So I think that's, you know, that's a big part, big part of the dilemma that a lot of people have, even men have these ideas impressed upon them of what they're looking for. Like a man at the end of the day, he's taught to just be attracted to a beautiful woman and to provide. To provide. Man is the provider. You know, he works, he comes home, provides the bread and butter. That's was old fashioned and it was very strong in the 60s and whatnot. It's still there today. It hasn't died out through the, the gene rations yet, generations. That mindset still exists. That man is the provider and the woman's just got to earn her keep by being attractive and providing sex, essentially. Essentially, that's, her, that's all she's got to do. That's her job. Whereas the man's got to go out there and use his skill set, use his qualities of perseverance and patience and virtue and whatever to progress in the world. He's taught how to make decisions and how to be brave and, you know, to forge his destiny and then find the right woman to procreate with. And generally, there's also the conditioning of what the right woman looks like, which goes hand in hand with how the woman tries to look and just look on the cover of any magazine, any modeling magazine, Woman's Weekly, any man's magazine, FHM, you know, Playboy. Did you know in the cosmetics field, a lot of women are actually... Since they started having Playboy, you know, where they actually edit women's vaginas so they don't have little bits hanging out. It's all just a clean cut slit kind of thing. Since they started making, producing these images on a mass scale, the percentage of, of women that went in for cosmetic surgery to have their labia majora snipped so that, and tucked so that they look as neat as, you know, it just shot up. So I think there's a correlation there and it's so strong. This idea of women needing to fit this image that they are willing to mutilate themselves in order to satisfy the expectations. And that's a statistic right there. I don't know how much it shot up by, but it was significant, the amount of profits they raked in because of all that, this idea of how women should look. So I think that's the, the biggest thing. I think that's also why I'll go back to the beginning now, why men are so needy and why women aren't as likely to settle down too quickly. If a woman's in her 20s, Unless she genuinely loves you and she isn't so lost to the conditioning, she's not lost in her ego, she's not lost in what everyone else is thinking about it, but she's walking to her own tune, she's acting from the center, and she can connect with people and empathize and love. Unless you meet this kind of girl and she loves you, if you're a guy, or if you are this kind of girl and you meet a guy and you fall in love and he genuinely loves you, then yeah, 
maybe you will settle and maybe you'll be together forever or at least a few years and you'll get a lot from it. But a lot of girls in their 20s, I think they realize they've only got so much time to find the right catch that they want to have a family with. And it's different. A guy thinks, well, I can have a child and, you know, generally, you know, the mother ends up looking after the child if there's a divorce. Statistically, there's a lot more single moms than single dads. You know, whereas the woman's, the point is that the men in that respect are probably not going to be as fearful about the commitment which comes with having a child and being committed to the child. They just walk off and potentially just pay child support. Whereas when a woman enters a relationship and thinks she thinks this could be the one and she might have a child to this man, that's like cuffs and shackles and you're locked in. And there's no leaving that. Your life pretty much splits in half for 18 good years at least. And then further on, furthermore, it keeps going on if you're a committed mother. So I think there's a lot more on the line for a woman. She's got less time in a prime window to find the right catch. And she doubly wants to find the right catch, you know. Because once she has that child, that's it. That's her picture. Whereas the man, he's got his whole life. He can meet multiple women, have multiple children. And it happens. You know what I'm saying? And he has that freedom. It's like if there's a shopping center, you know, and it's only open for, I don't know, 12 hours, half a day for the women. Or make it four hours. You know, like one-fifth of a day. Is that right? Uh, one-sixth of a day for women. And it's open 24 hours for man. Because he's got so much time in the world. He's got from the age of 18 to, to 60, potentially, or 50 or 40. You know what I mean? He's, he's more likely to take his time and appreciate what's in the shop and read everything, you know. Um, whereas the woman's only got, what, four hours or half as much time, a quarter of as much time as the guy. So if she finds what she's looking for, you know, she's going to settle for it. Anyway, I'm moving away from this analogy because I lost my point. But you guys get the point. There's a lot more on the line for the woman. There's not so much on the line for the man. And that's why I think the man is willing to settle down for a woman because he realizes that if the relationship fails and it doesn't work, he can move on to another one. He's got time to waste. Whereas a woman doesn't have so much time to waste. She doesn't have that luxury. So, if she's with a guy and she has a few red lights or she's a little dissatisfied and then someone else comes along, a perfect suitor, and everything's green lights and go, she might just go for it because she doesn't have much time to waste. A guy has the time to waste. He will see his relationships through to the end because why not? He's got time to peruse through the shop, you know, and try before you buy kind of thing. And then even buy it. And if it breaks and it doesn't work, he can buy something else. He's got time. You know what I'm saying? With a woman, she's only got a few hours. She's got to find the right thing. And she can't try before she buys for too long. She's just got to find the right thing and really focus on it, you know, before she truly commits to it. She's got to focus on make sure she's got the right deal for the kind of life she wants, the kind of partner she wants, and fam. So there's a lot more on the line, you know. If you look at like, you know, life's a garden and you've got your water, your attention and your energy and time, you know, a man's got a lot more water to water different plants and different relationships. Whereas a woman's just got so much. So really she can't afford to give too much of herself, you know what I mean, to every relationship. Really, I mean, she can give a lot to each relationship, but she's only got so much time. So I don't think she's really going to truly commit and invest all she's got until she finds the right plan and the right relationship. So anyway, that's, that's my thoughts in it. You know, why women are inconsistent, because they act from the outside in. And men are generally more consistent because they're taught to act from the inside out. And that might also be why men are, are more needy. And more, you know, there's a stereotype that in the old days that women were all emotional and vulnerable and men were like strong and they never cried. These days I think it's the opposite. The men are a lot more needy and emotional and even emotionally uh, available and sensitive whereas women aren't as emotionally available. And it's not even a matter that they're not, they're not ex choosing to put them, their emotions out there but a lot of the time I think it's because it's closed off and they're not really connected and acting from the emotional plane anymore. Women are taught to act from the heart. They're taught to act from their head. And that's the thing, what you want now, according to your head, changes depending on where you are, who you're with, and with time. You know, and when one person's desires and needs and wants 
a relative to context, then it's always going to keep things and emotions and what you need. It doesn't matter where you are in the outside world, you're still going to want the same things and you're going to hold on to it and hold on true. You know what I'm saying? So I don't blame women, like women that are really conditioned. And all I'm talking about now is conditioning. Like women and men are like a condition to different extents. There are a lot of feminine men. There are a lot of masculine, independent women who are also able to, to accept their feminine and connect and love and, and, and share fulfilling relationships. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I'm just talking about those that are really conditioned to be this way. And there's, I think there's a lot of people that are you know, just lost in, in the propaganda and the conditioning, the idea of what love is and what their gender is and how they should interact with others and how they should express love and, and visualize love and what it means to them. And it gets so stuck up here that it's like, well, it's hard for people to really open up enough to figure it out in here. Anyway, I've been talking for a while now and I've gotten the crux of my point out there, you know, so I hope the guys become a lot more sensitive to the, the fact that a woman has a reason, a good reason for not wanting to settle down too quick and for wanting to be open to options. Because she's got so much time, so much water and energy, and there's a lot more on the line. You know, put yourself in her shoes. Would you be so quick to jump into the first basket, you know, the first opportunity? <laughs> what if there's a hole in it? You know what I'm saying? Count your eggs before they hatch. Uh, I don't know, whatever. Um, and I hope women also appreciate why men, you know, are willing to invest and commit to each relationship, and why they're more emotionally needy, because men are taught about needing approval from the in of their inside qualities, whereas women need approval of their cosmetics and the way they move and all that superficial stuff. Men need the approval of their values and how hard they've tried and accomplishments that they achieved through hard work and perseverance. You know, that's how we're taught to to get our strokes, our ego stroked, is through being recognized on an inner, inner level and everything that we've provided. We just want the recognition. And that's why men might be needy and maybe women aren't taught to be to recognize these things because they don't recognize it within themselves they don't strive as hard as men and they're not taught to to be recognized in their achievements and their virtues you know and who they are inside so it's very hard for the woman to give the man the appreciation he needs and the validation he needs whereas the man will give the woman the appreciation she needs because he does appreciate the cosmetic he does appreciate the beauty and the sex yeah but I think a man is also looking for more because he's able to empathize and he's able to act from the inside plane, at least he's taught to. And this isn't like, you know, with conditioning, a lot of men are just lost in the mechanics and they think they've just got to accomplish, accomplish, and maybe they're not as connected either. You know, they're just they're still maybe lost in their head and thinking, okay, this is how an ideal man is. Man's got to be successful, you know, so that he can build his status and earn the right woman. But I think there is more likely that men are able to, given the conditioning, still connect from a place within simply because that's the way they were raised. You know? And it's a hard situation, really. And, but it becomes utterly obvious why each gender, looking at how everything is, find it hard to see eye to eye and appreciate each other the way they wish to be appreciated. And why the female and the male seem worlds apart. They're not worlds apart. It's just conditioning it has us becoming worlds apart. You know, it's dividing us. Not just the genders either. It divides everything. But that's that's for other talks, I suppose. Anyway, guys, I kind of ranted on there a bit. I might edit this, or I might not. I don't know. I've only got so much time. So, but thanks for watching. Um, if you have any feedback or any ideas, feel free to post. And if you're interested in this kind of stuff. Feel free to like and, and subscribe and even share with your friends. I'd appreciate it. Um, for more random stuff, random talks. There's heaps of other stuff. Feel free to check out on other playlists. But yeah, till then, everybody, respect, love, and light. Peace out, yo.